Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Monday, November 6, 2017. This is the Super Organizer Show with James Lott Jr. And I am James Lott Jr., the Super Organizer. That's how that works. And it's a nice, gloomy day here in Los Angeles. And hopefully last week, you guys have survived Halloween and all this stuff that happened the weekend before, that led up to Halloween. Um, and you're ready to get into, it's now really into fall. Fall is here. And get ready for the holidays. We have a holiday towards the end of the month. And then, of course, next month we have two, so it's going to be an interesting time. And I have some great shows coming up on holiday stuff that I do every year, so we're going to just keep that in mind. Um, I have a great guy, two great guests today going to be on the show. I'm so excited. I like to reach out to my peeps out there who are in the industry. Um, so those of you who are not in the industry, we have some interesting topics we're going to talk about. But first, as always, before I do anything, I always do my thanks and gratitude, because I believe in giving thanks out loud and living in gratitude every day. Um, and I try to find things that, you know, I, I'm, I feel grateful for. And this week wasn't that hard. Um, I want to live, live in gratitude and thanks of my best friend, David Bennis, who had a birthday. I won't say his age. But he's doing very well for a person of a certain age. He plays hockey. He plays tennis. He swims. He travels. He's, and he works. He's doing great stuff. So, happy birthday, David. Uh, my nephew, Ricky, who just turned 28, he has a family, uh, my little great niece and nephew, and his wife Abby. They're doing so they're driving cross country and living their dreams and doing what they're going to do. My daughter Tammy turned thirty years old a few days ago. How does I have a, how do I have a thirty year old daughter when I'm only thirty one? I just don't know how that happened. But Tammy, I love you. She's the mother of my grandchildren, and um, so she gave me a gift that keeps on giving. And I just love her so much, and I had a great time seeing her. And, and she's my oldest, so you never forget your oldest, right? You never forget your first. <laughs> so I just live in gratitude that she's alive and she's doing well, and my grandkids' kids are alive and doing well, and I just live in gratitude. When you can celebrate another birthday, especially people who know me personally, my family, I've had a lot of loss in the last few months and the last year. Um, I'm holding on tight to the remaining, my remaining family members. I'm holding on tight to them. So those are my thanks and gratitude. And I also want to give thanks and gratitude to my next guest who is on today uh, for being on the show. My guest is an organizing productivity expert, organizing coach. She is, the, she is the Divine Organization LLC based out of San Antonio, Texas. She's a NAPO member and also a member of the American Association of Daily Money Managers. Make sure I said that all correctly. It is Kat Jacoby. Hi, Kat. Hey, James. So glad to be on your show. And um, I'm, I'm a grandma, too, so I know how you must love your, your grandchildren. And um, sorry you've had some losses in your, your family of, of late. That's really tough. So, yeah, hang on to, to all those those babies and your kids and your loved ones. <laughs> it is, it's, so, it's, it's, you know how it is, don't you? It's, it's so funny because as we get older, we get new people in our family and then you lose the other ones. It's kind of like, that's how life works. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, um, you know, and, and it's so much of the philosophy of my business. It's not just about organizing and uh, efficiency and productivity, but it's also about living uh, lives of abundance. Yes. And, um, and that's what we do every day. I, I like that, Kat. I like that. Yes, I, so just so you, I don't know if you, what you know or don't know, I lost um, a brother last year who was 47 uh, oh. to a heart attack. And I lost, and then two months ago, back to back, I lost my dog of 15 years and my grandmother the next day. And it was all sudden. Oh. They were all sudden. So it's kind of like a, it's been a strange, and I was clo obviously close to all three of them. And then I've also lost a couple of sisters in law. But, but, kind of, but those are the major ones in my life that is kind of, and they made me look at my other siblings, look at me being a grandfather. Um, it's like, it's just, it just, it really affected everything. Well, of course it did. You yeah. had a lot of, a lot of whammies right there in a row. Yes. And um, as you know, with professional organizers, we look at, at our work with a holistic approach yes, um, and, and embrace people in everything that we do. So, so sorry for your losses and again, and um, hold tight to those that, that you have around you. You bring, you bring a good point up because I always tell people, and I tell my clients this, because I still do some actual organizing. I like being in the field and having fun and doing that. Um, 
But I always tell them, you know, we're coming into your space. You've called upon us for whatever reason. And I know for, for me, I do work with a lot of people who are at change of life. And some are widowhood. Um, some are adult children leaving the nest, divorce, and like that. So you bring up a good point of, you know, when we, we take things with a holistic approach. Did you find that, because you, your, your title is Divine Organization, <laughs> it was like a great title. Um, do you find that it's, it's, it's heavy in your, in your practice? It is. Um, when I started my business, it, this was a definite, a definite calling. Um, it was certainly no accident. Um, I love it. And uh, it, it was a calling by God, and that was the, the reason for the name of my business. And so I've embraced that every, every day since I started my business over 12 years ago. Wow. And, um, and I, don't, I don't shy away from that. And mm-hmm. the, the clients that come to me come to me for a reason. Mm-hmm. There's no accident. I agree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so true. I feel like we call people into our lives. So we're, we're paired up. I guess I always say, I always say divine intervention. I say it all the time uh, and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, we, we're called to their lives. I'm called to theirs. You're called to theirs to, to help them live their best life, whatever that, whatever that is, through organization. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, so you've been doing it 12 years. Okay, so I'm coming up on, I'm coming up on nine in organizing. Like, yeah, I'm coming up on nine, yeah, nine years. Because um, I'll say 12 is a long timer. What is something that you have learned, like going into years like 10, 11, 12, that you didn't know about in the early years about running a business? Hmm. Um, let me think. Um, something that I didn't know. Um, that... That sometimes it, you know, might get a little hard even after this many years in, in business. That sometimes you can't just um, slack off and assume that everything's going to be clear sailing. That um, sometimes, you know, you have to get out there and, and continue to market yourself and, um, and stuff even with this many years in business. That's a good one. That's true because because we because we've been we have some longevity, been there for a while. You think, oh, well, I, I've been through it all, so to speak. Um, I can kind of sit back and you know the clients will just keep coming, and maybe if I just don't market this heavily this this quarter, it won't be as bad. But you're right; you kind of have to continue the process that you started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't you can't rest on your laurels. No, um, at all. Yeah. Um, and so you started 12 years ago. When you started, did you know there was an industry called well, professional organizing? Because we're a young industry, first of all. So, but did you know that there was a business out of it? No, yeah. absolutely not. <laughs> I, I, I did not. I actually um, had gotten laid off from a, um, a business, and I found myself at a crossroads in life and never had been without a job before and i was urged by um, close friends and mentors in life to just really search you know within myself to um to do things like read uh james buckingham's books he was new in the world at that time that his books like now discover your strengths okay and you know i i read all of those kinds of books and everything and i I thought, oh, well, that's all good, you know, so my strengths are, um, I'm really super organized, and I really like to help people. Fine, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> and uh, so I, I kind of Googled organizing, oh. and I immediately found NAPO. Perfect subway. And I jumped in, I joined NAPO right then, and I jumped in feet first. Yes. Head first. Everything. Yes. <laughs> Body and first. I, yes. I never looked back. Wow. I took, took every class. I did everything. My husband probably thought I was absolutely nuts. He said, you've never worked this hard um, as a paralegal in your life. Wow. And he said, you know, you don't sleep. You don't do anything else but this. And I said, but I'm having the time of my yeah. life, and it's on my terms. Yes. Amen. 
That's and I love because I see I that's the thing. I came from say I think we all come from somewhere else. And I came, you know, later in life, I was like 40. So I came from insurance education, like boring. And once I learned about organizing, because I was so excited about it, I was devouring, like you're doing, devouring everything into it. I mean, I was just like I mean, I still to this day, I love reading articles and books and I love learning, I love learning stuff about our industry because it's so vast and so different um, that I'm like you, it's just, it's so exciting. And when you when you do something that's exciting, that it's not really work. It's like, you're just like, it's, it's go ahead. Yeah. It's not work. It's, it's our passion. So it's never, ever work. Right. And you love it. So like, you well, can't help it. Well, it's occasionally it's worth oh, well, yes. a really, a really crummy <laughs> job where you're slipping a lot of stuff. That's occasionally it's work, but, you know, for the most part, it's not work. Okay, Kat, I'll give you points on that one because I, last week we had 100 degree weather in Los Angeles for about four days in a row. And of course I had a client that we were scheduled in her garage. So it was like, okay, well, we had a t we had, we were almost done with this project. It was like a month long project. We were almost done. So we didn't want to reschedule and move into the house. Or do anything. We said, we want to finish this. So we, I, and of course, some people, I saw organizers out there, when it's hot weather and you're outside or half outside, take lots of precautions. We took lots of breaks. We had lots of water. We had some fans on us, but it was a job. Now that week, it was those, those three or four days, it was a complete job because <laughs> that weather just made it that way. We finished, we finished the job. And we're very happy about that. But yes, I will agree with you on that one <laughs> so much. Um, yeah, Naples funny because I, again, I didn't know either. I had no clue. There was a business out of this, um, and and thank God for NAPO being out there and leading the charge and being the, the largest organization for organizers um, to help kind of guide many people through their first years and their their and their time. I think it's so, and I think it's just a great, it's a great organization. So I think people can do it. Yeah. And so, so you yeah. still, so you still find that it's still helpful to be part of this group after all these years. Absolutely, I I couldn't imagine not being a member of NAPO, and I was uh, recently on and asked the organizer panel for my chapter for NAPO Austin, and um, Shout out without, to them. Yeah, without a doubt, um, each and every one of us was asked, you know, what our, you know, biggest, you know, um, feedback was, you know, as an organizer, and every, every person on the the panel said being a member of NAPO and it is just so important um, and it's not so much the getting business or anything it was all about being part of something bigger mm -hmm. and what we learned from ongoing you know education and our colleagues and all that we get from NAPO and from giving back to something bigger mm -hmm. And that's, and that's, you know, that's part of this whole thing. I love that it's about giving back on someone. We have to give back. I mean, it's like you have to kind of, well, because what we're doing is we are, we are affecting change in the world. I want people to know that we are affecting change in the world. We are out there, um, no matter if it's a small organizing job or a large one, whether it's paper organizing or a garage, whether it's, it's helping children get their toys in the body. Like, we are affecting change in the world. We're out there trying to make the world run a little smoother um, more efficient, less clutter. Like we really are trying to help people. Yeah, absolutely. We we bring what I always tell uh, people is we bring our clients help and hope. That's one of my. I like points. that. I like that. That's so true. I like that. So we do help and hope. I like that. Okay, so one of the things, you, you have many things you do in your business, but it's just one thing I wanted to kind of bring up um, with you is that it's your disorganization calculator. I had never seen this before in my entire life. Didn't know what this was, and I, I found it very interesting, and I thought people should hear a little bit about just kind of what this what this concept is. So on your, on your website, which is divineorganization.com, you can go there and, and, and see it under services and stuff. Um, how did this concept come into being for this, this organization calculator? Well, I had worked for years for law firms, and some of them, um, I, I was blessed that I saw and was a part of firms that ran like, you know, well-oiled machines. And, and, and that was such a blessing. I learned, and we, we were fantastic 
you know, at, at what we did. And then I was part of some where, you know, efficiency and productivity just ran amok. And you can imagine with, um, with my personality and my skill set, that just kind of made me, you know, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Fit, you know, yes. for me. And, you know, um, so after I had started my business, you know, I just kind of ran some numbers and everything about what, uh, how much time people waste. And then with the statistics that NAPO had about how much time um, people spent, you know, looking for things that were lost and how much um, wasted time that there is in the average office Mm -hmm. and with people every day and ran some numbers with that and, you know, put that calculator on my website to give an idea of how much money people are actually losing by being inefficient and unproductive in their work day. And when I actually did that, that was prior to social media um, coming into play. And so um, I'm in the process of revising my website. So that's probably something I need to take a new look at and and put something out there as to how much time people actually waste as a result of um, running down the rabbit holes of of social media time wasted. Um, That one was would probably be huge. Oh my God! I mean, it's, it's happened to me several times. Um, yes, <laughs> completely. I'm sure because because I mean that's the thing. I saw because I mean of course as organized, we've heard the different different people come up with different things. Like it takes seven an average of seventeen minutes to find something, or twenty minutes to find something a day. And I've, I've heard it takes you know forty bucks a week. If you I mean, like I mean I've heard all kinds of different numbers. Um, but I just found very interesting that you actually have this 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 mechanism this concept to actually plug in um, a certain numbers and it comes up with something. I just thought that was very, I thought it was very, it was very, it was very interesting to me because I, I hadn't just never well, seen it before. I had one of my, one of my bosses and he was probably the, um, I don't know, he was probably the, the most brilliant attorney that I ever worked for. He um, jokingly called me the human calculator. <laughs> and, and so, <laughs> he, you know, he, that I, I could find money and, and <laughs> reforce out, you know, just because of my efficiency and productivity, that was just ingrained in everything that I did. So I took that as a compliment when he called me the human calculator. So. That is that is a compliment. Uh, that's a very big compliment. I'm like I've never I've never been called that before. Um, because, so basically, folks, what, you know, if if you look at it, it's it's a it's it's like like some of the questions they ask are average salary, number of employees number of non-working employees, number of hours, and it kind of tells you per year, per month, it breaks down per week, what costs you your company, this disorganization. I just thought it was very, because some people do like things in this kind of form. They want to see it, especially in business a lot of times. I don't know how many business clients you've worked with, I've worked with a few. They want to see actual numbers. They like like numbers. (laughs) They they don't want to talk, you're right. They don't want to talk in esoteric terms. So no, they want to know what it's costing their bottom line. Exactly, and you and I have been in businesses that we we know how that goes. So I so I saw I said, oh my, ooh, this is a great thing for businesses, especially um, small, big, doesn't matter what kind, um, and to actually help assist again productivity. That's that's what that's what you do um, to be more to manage the productivity more. Because I always say, I try to I'm trying to go away from saying time management using those words because you can't manage time. Obviously, no. uh, it's just, but it's it is productivity. It's that that's why you think my nipple changed their name and those other things. I mean, it's like it's more of like it's about managing productivity within time um, and making it yeah. most efficient, right? Yeah, absolutely. We all have the same amount of time each day, so right. it's, it's about productivity and efficiency. I want to thank you for being on the show. You're you're great. I mean, this is this is so, and you're and you're in, in Texas and. Tell people where they can find you on social, because you are on social media. Your company's on social media. Where can they find your company online on social media? Well, I'm on Facebook um, as Divine Organization, and I'm on Instagram also um, as well, and under Divine Organization. And really, those are where they can find me personally is Kat Jacoby. Um, and you already gave me a shout out for my website, divineorganization.com. So I appreciate that, and of course we 
give a shout out for our beloved NAPO, yes. NAPO.net, and mm-hmm. my uh, chapter, NAPO Austin. I'm also a member of the, the virtual chapter, um, okay. which is very beneficial for anyone who doesn't have a chapter near them okay. um, or, or just likes, you know, the, the many benefits of having um, the things that the virtual chapter has to, to offer. Wow. Wow, very good. Yeah, you're you're out. She's out there. She's out. She's out. She's around. Um, but thanks for being on the show. And uh, folks, I will post her links to the stuff she just mentioned on our page, which of course is the SOS Show or James Lodge Jr. page on Facebook. So you'll be able, and also on Twitter, I'll be on our SOS underscore show. Oh yeah. I'll make sure it's all. I, I am on. I am on Twitter. I forgot about that one. <laughs> I'm on Twitter. Twitter as uh, as at Cat Organizes. Cat organizes, yeah. So well, I gotta make sure I can make sure I'm following you. You're on there, so guys. So yeah, so they'll all be on there, so you can actually get to them, and we'll do that. We're gonna go to a commercial, and we'll be right back. Are you a producer looking for a host for a new project, or are you interested in a career in hosting and don't know how to begin, or are you a host looking for a community? Well, welcome to Meet the Host, the place where hosts meet. Go to YouTube.com, Meet the Host. For the show, which airs every Monday, it features hosts from all genres talking about their world of hosting. Then continue the conversation and go to Meet the Host on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, where we post news, entertainment, tips, and more, all geared to hosting. That's Meet the Host, the place where hosts meet. Hi, I'm James Lye Jr., professional organizer and certified life coach, and the owner of A Lot of Help. I have a new series podcast called 15 Tips to Self-Care Series 1. It is 15 individual tracks, all short length, that tackle a subject that's very useful in life. Some of them are for business, some are for personal, some are for organizing, and they're all educational. I invite you to go to Spreaker.com forward slash JLJ Media and take a listen. Pick one. You don't have to go in order. You can pick from 15 first and go to one or one and go to 15. Subjects like procrastination is no joke. What is a life coach? And everything in between. Go to Spreaker.com, JLJ Media, and go to 15 Tips to Self-Care Series 1. Also, visit us on the Facebook page, A Lot of Help. We're back. It's the SOS Show with James Law Jr. I am James Law Jr., the super organizer, and we're back. Uh, special thanks to Kat Jacoby for being on the show, of course. I want to continue the theme of um, about calculating time and time management. And I am trying to start, I'm trying to change my, my verbiage in terms of saying time management because that literally you can't <laughs> manage time. Time is a, is a concept and, it's, and it's, um, it's not tan, you can't touch it. And, and actually, like hair, it made changes. But it's more about taking time and making it work for you. Taking time and doing the best you can in within the time you have. I always, people always ask me, this is an example, James, how do you do everything that you do? You write books and plays and this and that and your TV. And I said, and I always ask, do you get sleep? I said, all the time. I get plenty of sleep. Sleep all the time. I work it out. I say, okay, I have eight hours, or I have 10 hours, or I have 12 hours, however long it is, and I make the most of those 12 hours. Um, and what gets done gets done, what doesn't doesn't. And I try to power, and it's all about prioritizing, it's about being mindful, being present in the in your day. Those are some great some things right there you can think about. Can you devote time, can you devote an hour to just checking emails. Think about that. Is that something you know you can do? To me, it's tangible. You set aside now. And then while you're doing that, and that within that hour, you're mindfully going through the emails and handling what you can handle now. There are some things you can answer really quick. Take you 30 seconds, you can answer. So you're answering that. Then there are emails that may require more time. So you can you could choose. Okay, for example, you can go, okay, well, I have ten emails. Four are super intensive. They're like they require me to do some stuff before I get as I get back to them or back and forth. Some are just really these need answers. 
So you go either way, you can go, okay, I'm going to work on the intense ones first, the four that I really, that I would take a lot of time and try to get those done. And then at the end, really quick, I'll just answer off questions. For me, I'm the opposite. I'm like, I'll let me answer those really quick ones really fast, get those answers out. There's less emails in the box. And then start to handle which ones. Now, the four, you got to really look at it and go, okay, which ones within those four will take the longest? See, it requires thought. It requires planning. It requires, it requires, again, being present. It requires all kinds of stuff to do this. You have to really be in it and thinking and having to plan. You have to work. You can't be lazy about it. You got to go, okay, well, those first two emails, it might take like 10 minutes to do what they want me to do. The, the fourth email might take about 20. Like you can just, you can really kind of try to, or you don't know time, just kind of just look at it how, the, how, how strong how much strong, how much work is going to take to, to actually answer that question for that email. If you have to go to a filing cabinet, do you have to look for something? Do you have to uh, research something? Is, is, it, is it a spreadsheet that you have to finish? I mean, like, the, whatever it is, you kind of look at it, kind of base kind of what, how much long it might take you, and that can determine which one you tackle first. I know a lot of times in my practice, I'm always like, when it comes to like papers and stuff, I'll be I'll be um, working with somebody, and I'll come we'll come across a bag of papers. I'm like, let's do it now, because it's the most time consuming, and it's just it's a bother. But when it's done, everything else breezes by. It's, it's and you're happy it's done. Sometimes it's like I said, it's good to do that hard stuff first. Um, I'm a believer of that. It's like, you know, work now, go hard now, and play later, and kind of thing. I'm like, it's, it's, it's first. Do it, get out the way. Because sometimes, too, some emails, some things you work on, are end up being connected to something else that you make it done, too. You know, um, like, I'll be working in a drawer with somebody, and I go say, okay, well, I'm here to do a two-hour session. We're going to work on this area. Again, talking about productivity and management management within time. We're gonna work on this drawer. Well sometimes while you clean out that drawer, certain things in it lead to another drawer that would be right across the way. And you weren't planning on working on that drawer today, but you probably could get both it's kind of they're kind of connected somehow. Because you don't want sometimes you don't want to take like one area and check up another area and say, I'll do that one later. It might be better to do both at the same time because they're kind of connected. And then you do work on both drawers and then you're done and you're actually ahead of the game for next time because that other drawer is done. And they're kind of connected. A lot of times in our home offices, there are things that are just, they're connected, naturally just connected. If you're in the kitchen, sometimes, sometimes that's connected to the service porch or, or mud room or laundry room or whatever you want to call it. Sometimes you work in the you work in the dining room. It's connected to the breakfast nook. A bedroom can be connected to another bedroom. Like it's like, there's certain things that can be, could be connected. A closet to the you know it just it's kind of happens that way. Bathrooms. You work on a cabinet, but then some stuff could be put into a drawer. But the drawer is messy. You kind of have to work. You don't want to just throw stuff in there and make more work for yourself later. You want to maybe you should do both at the same time. If I, you can assess that. Again, that's being present. I always think be present. Being present in within time, <laughs> I don't feel like, um, completely is one of the best things you can do. Because you can, can, you, cause you can really gauge when you're looking at something and you're looking at your time and go, okay, I, I could do these two. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you're like, I only have an hour left. Let's not start that. Or I have 15 minutes left or 10 minutes left. Let's not start that. So hopefully if you're mindful of you look around and go, okay, well, let's start this. This let's get this take care of this little thing over here. This tabletop has like all this stuff on it. That'll take us five minutes to clear it off and put it back, put things back where they belong, ten minutes. Then you're making the most the most use of your time. I look at time like a pie. It's all sliced up into pieces, and and every piece of the pie represents something you should be doing. Um, and I tell it all the time, schedule in. Um Sometimes you're busy, schedule in paperwork day or hour. Schedule in phone call hour. You know, schedule I mean, there's not it's not it's no problem to schedule stuff in. And that's what I do is I, I carve out and I write in my I write in my, my book, my schedule, what I'm doing that day at that time. So a lot of times when I wake up the next morning and I map out my day, um, 
I say, okay, I have these two hours for gardening. I actually, I actually put that in there. These two hours, I'm gardening. And I think, oh, I'm in the garden, same thing. I mean, it, it applies to every part of your life. In your garden, you go, okay, well, what can I do out here that's most effective? I need to water anything. While I'm watering this part of the garden, what can I, if I don't have to stand there and do it, sometimes you can just put the, the hose in a certain area and it fills up the area. Okay, I got about five, ten minutes before that fills up. I'll go over here and, de and you know, de-weed, you know, this, this, this flower bed. Like, you can almost, and that's why you, you can kind of multitask a little bit, but you're still mindful with that water and that hose. But you're like, I'll take care of this area really quick, too. Or for me, sometimes, it's while I'm watering my trees, I have a bucket, and I'm pulling water in to water my plants. They're in the same area. So everybody's getting water at the same time. And there are times when I just spray all my plants with water, like it's raining, and go, okay, today, you're just getting the spray. And that still helps. Some days, it's individual attention. Some days, it's just the spray. Either way, they're getting water. Either way, they're getting attention that week. And you're still under your time. So I don't know. I hope I, explain, I, hope I gave you some good examples on that. That's kind of how I'm trying to explain this. I just, I just feel like within time periods, you have to really assess what needs to be done, how long things may or may not take. And to be exact, just how long things may or may not take, and then go from there. And then try to fit it on, try to fit it in within that time period. And that could be a half hour, hour, 10 minutes, two hours a day. A week, you can say Mondays are this, Tuesdays are that. I mean, I mean, however you want to do it. But I think it's very really important to look at what you're doing and are you doing it the most efficiently? Um, I don't want you to kill yourself, go bend, you know, or, you know, go overboard and trying to take care of all this stuff within certain times. But be realistic. Be realistic with yourself. It's going to take me three hours to do this, probably. Now, it may not take you three hours. If you finish early, that's great. That's time you could add back into your life. It may take longer. That happens too, you know. Um, and it takes longer. Look at what, how you're working. Um, were you stopping a lot of different times? Does that take longer? Were you taking phone calls? Were you really dedicated? Or did you misdiagnose, so to speak, how long it might take? And there's no blame or anything on any of that stuff. Just like, okay, well, now I sh next time if I really want to get this done, I probably shouldn't take my phone with me. Or next time, I'll look more closely at how long this may or may not take. And you can cushion that in your, in your, in your schedule. Everything, everything is changeable and doable and, you can, you know, and, and malleable. You can always change things. I mean, it's nothing, like I said, there's no blame or guilt or shame. You know, things happen when they happen. But you, could all, you should always check in with yourself. When you're doing tasks, that's how that's how I always look at it. It's always just something you should look at, and uh, and you should be able to, you know, uh, work from that. So I'm gonna leave you with that. So there's anything about schedule stuff. Schedule stuff in. You can do it. Everybody, I'm not the only person who can do everything because I can't do everything, but I do a lot, and I have I I have good management of my time. I have good productivity skills and assessment skills, and I learn that over time, and you can too. You can learn that over time. I think it's, so I'll get somebody in here. We're going to talk about that, assessing your time. I'll get somebody, I'll get somebody on the program, and we'll have that happen. Well, that's another uh, edition of this Organizer Show. I'm so glad you guys could uh, join me if you're listening to this, uh, whether you're listening to this on iTunes or Speaker.com or even iHeartRadio. If you are, let me know where you actually let me know where you hear this from. If you, if you comment below or wherever, wherever you find this comment on there, give me five stars, rate me on iTunes. Um, I heard you. Let me know what you what you think. Uh, if you want to be a guest on the show, of course, let me know. You can uh, send me a, an email at jlotjuniorable.com, or you can send me a message on all of your platforms, which is the SOS underscore show on Twitter. The ad is implied. Uh, and uh, on Facebook as the uh, as the Super Organizer Show, you can go there and find me there, and or James Lott Jr. everywhere, and uh, we'll see if we can work something out and have you on the show to showcase you just like I did with Jet uh, Cat Jacoby earlier in this episode, and of course the blog is superorganizeruniverse.com. and I hope that you guys have a great week, happy November, and take care.